All right. Hey, what's going on, everyone? It's Corey here, and I am with Assistant Superintendent of Sherman Independent School District, Dr. Tyson Bennett. And today, I am just going to be talking to, to Dr. Bennett about what his experience has been with their uh, first week back to school and uh, just some things like that. So uh, first off, Dr. Bennett, thank you so much for taking the time to hop on this call with me and uh, tell me just a little bit about uh, what you're seeing from students and teachers and kind of the, how's everybody feeling to be back at school? Sure, it, it's really been great. I mean, we, we've really been planning for this for so long, all summer long, you know, once we had the closure start in March and then we quickly turned and started meeting a lot of the needs that we were seeing going to distance learning and uh, really learning a lot, of the, a lot of new things during those few months and just so appreciative of the community coming out, you guys uh, at the meals team coming out and helping out in so many different community partners. You know, in that short time back from March to May, we fed over 200,000 meals and snacks to over 70,000 kids. And we couldn't have done that without the community. So, you know, that was an experience and it was mm -hmm. just great. Uh, and I, I think, uh, you know, but once we moved through that and the year ended and then we had graduation, you know, we had graduation in a unique sort of way. We broke it up in four different graduations, did the social distance thing, had masked up, uh, made sure that we were as safe as possible and still gave those kids uh, those senior kids, the experience of graduating at Bearcat Stadium, historic Bearcat Stadium, that was awesome. But yeah. I'll tell you what, right after that, we hit the ground running with planning for this year, knowing that, you know, we prioritized coming back to school. We have right. always prioritized that coming back to school in a traditional format. We want kids coming back to school, uh, but we have to do it in a safe way. And so what we started doing uh, in the summer was getting together an enormous amount of team members from staff and students and our community parents coming back together, looking at so many different areas from the operations of the school district uh, to our facilities, to cleaning, to everything, starting to lay out guidelines. We had probably a 40 plus page uh, document that we worked on and created for our community to put out there just because we wanted to make sure that our families and our kids felt comfortable, that they understood first, here is what a traditional school format is going to look like. Here are all the safety protocols. Here's what we're going to do. Here's what a distance learning format looks like. You have the options. And we gave uh, families the option, come back traditional school on August 17th. Here's what it's going to look like or select to come back remote distance learning. And here's what that's going to look like. And so that was what our focus was all summer long. OK, awesome. And as far as as far as students actually coming back, um, I mean, I can I've, I've heard uh, from other people who are teachers, maybe not necessarily in Sherman ISD, but that. Older kids understand the rules of social distancing and uh, wearing masks. Um, are are y'all, what challenges are y'all seeing with uh, maybe younger kids or just with uh, um, people wearing masks and, and following those guidelines that are keeping people safe while they're in that traditional learning setting? Sure. So I agree with you, Corey. A lot of the folks were used to, I mean, because since we started closing in March, even in the communities, uh, when they go out, Folks are used to wearing masks. And uh, and so just examples of that for us, we really say we, we say mask, but it's really a face covering because there's different options that are available. And we do require all staff, all students to wear that face covering uh, when they're when they're here with us. Uh, one example being a gator. Got the great Bearcat gator here that, that students are, uh, you know, that have have access to. And so we provide this to all students and, and staff for those that, that request it. A lot of times kids and, 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 and staff come with their own because they're going to wear. We want them to wear what they're comfortable wearing. Uh, but we do provide that gator. We also have uh, the, the Bearcat mask uh, as well. And then we have uh, the real, you know, the different shield opportunities. And, and so really it's, it's, we require that face covering, but it's whatever works for them. And, uh, and, and truly it, it's probably, it's been less of a challenge than really I thought um, because I think folks were already used to it. And, and a lot of folks would say, well, the kids are not going to be able to do that. The little kids, the preschoolers and the, and the kindergartners, but <laughs> I was amazed. We were out there first day. Dr. Hicks and I, our superintendent, were out there the first day traveling through all the schools, kids showing up. 
Uh, they had all kinds of different masks. It's almost like an accessory item now. They're really excited to have the Superman, the Batman, the different kind of things of masks. And so we haven't noticed, though it's a challenge, uh, but we haven't noticed that, you know, I was really concerned that, hey, we're only going to have half the kids show up with masks. You rarely ever saw any kids coming in, parents coming in, families not having provided that face covering and really not already being able to use to uh, to utilizing those face coverings. So that's been less of a challenge than I thought. Uh, so that's been a good thing. Cool. And so you kind of mentioned earlier that y'all had, y'all had taken uh, some steps this summer, getting set up for mm -hmm. virtual learning and stuff like that. What has that looked like for the school district just with getting the technology going and, and training teachers on how to use that? What has that experience been like? You know, exactly. That's uh, that's something that, that we've been doing a lot of training, a lot of planning and looking at the uh, opportunities. First of all, we have to survey our community. We surveyed our community multiple times from the COVID closure time back in March to May to even during the summer, surveying our families. We were really focused on making sure that we understood what type of technology they already had available to them. Because what we want to do is we want to make sure those kids and those families that were going to be distance learning, that we, if they did not already have the technology that was needed to be successful in a remote learning environment, then we wanted to be able to provide that to them. So from the standpoint of Chromebook, you know, those uh, in, in hotspots so that they could get on and they can inter interact successfully in an online environment. And so we did that during the summer. We've continually purchased more and more of the technology that's needed in the hotspots. Also, uh, understanding that without in and around our community, I'm looking out my window right now and there's a there's a Sermon ISD school bus sitting out there that has a hotspot on it that's emitting oh, okay. Uh, internet activity. We have these, and you'll notice, so t take a look now as you go throughout town. If you see a Sherman IC school bus parked in a location, don't think that it's broke down there. We actually have that sitting there, and it has a hotspot on it, and you can jump on, and you can uh, connect, and so that's placed throughout our community in ways that kids can access, too, if they don't already have the internet access there at home. Okay, very nice. That's awesome that you guys are doing that, um, and what about so when it comes to uh, when it comes to school, there's there's the learning aspect of it, then there's the social mm -hmm. aspect of it. With comes with like sports, extracurricular activities, bands, uh, cheer, dance, all that stuff. How are the new back to school guidelines uh, affecting that for you guys? Right. So this is something I, I talked to uh, all of our coaches at the beginning of the school year. And here's one thing that I said that really has bothered me uh, since the beginning of this. And I'll tell you, it's bothered me from a parent perspective. I had a senior student that graduated in 2020. So I had a senior daughter that just graduated in last year. And I have a senior daughter this year uh, as well as an eighth grade daughter. And so uh, one thing that I noticed that that really is frustrating is kids losing the opportunities to make memories. Right. I just I really it's hard for me to handle that. And so uh, this whole situation, the pandemic and things that are going on and these adjustments and the face coverings and the social distancing and things like that. Uh, kids are losing memories that they would have uh, made in a, in a different situation without the pandemic. So my comment and my talk with coaches is whatever we can do in a safe situation, we want to still hopefully provide those memories to kids and memories being playing on Bearcat, you know, out, out there at Bearcat Stadium for our football right. games, having the volleyball games, being able to experience that, being able to experience the socialization with their friends. You know, kids are adapting to it and they're learning and doing that in a safe way. But that is very important to us that we're going to work within the guidelines, of the Texas Education Agency, the UIL uh, governing athletics. And we're really hoping that uh, we continually maintain these memorable, memorable events for these kids so that when they finish their senior year, they're not only thinking about COVID and what they lost. They yeah. truly have to have we, we need to maintain these memorable, memorable events as best we possibly can in a safe environment. That's awesome. Yeah. And that's why, you know, that's one thing that when I think back uh, with high school sports or, you know, I was in band and those are, you know, I, I remember more of that stuff than just sitting in a classroom. I mean, I, I had some great teachers and I learned a lot of great stuff, um, but that was the stuff that I take with me throughout the rest of my life. And so it's awesome that you guys are kind of, you know, I, I think it's important to take those safety precautions so that you don't wind up where the, the football team's shutting down or the band's shutting yeah. down and, you know, take it serious now that way you can you can make it through the season um yeah. so tyson uh 
one thing that the, you know, the Sherman Independent School District has going on also is the building the new high school. Um, mm. I know whenever, when COVID first broke out, we saw, or, or at least in my experience, we saw some construction crews with, you know, residential and commercial uh, kind of slow down because, you know, social distancing guidelines or people weren't sure what it looked like going into work. How has this pandemic impacted the construction timeline with Sherman ISD? What does sure. that look like? Right. So that's something. High school, sorry. Right. Right. So that's something we watched all along the way ever since, you know, the COVID closure started. And we we stayed in contact with our construction manager, Cadence McShane, on the high school project. So we're continually asking them, what do you see currently that may be impacting our schedule? And what do you see down the road about two, three months away impacting the schedule? So obviously on a construction project, it's manpower and it's supply chain. And so out of those two things, we really watched that. So first of all, Cadence McShane making sure that their safety program was in place so that we didn't have guys who were on the job there coming up with COVID. Or if they did, then it wasn't a situation where they were interacting with a lot of people in an unsafe manner such that we had to send such that Cadence McShane had to send a good number of, of folks home. So though, like all like all uh, entities, they were impacted uh, in a really limited sort of way with with. Uh, laborers here and there, maybe contracting COVID, and but they made sure that it was limited so that if they had to go home, we didn't have a lot of individuals going home. So we didn't really see a whole uh, uh, you know, large impact from that. Another okay. aspect of the labor force that was positive, I say positive, at least here for Sherman, is, is that down in the Metroplex area, uh, obviously some of the restrictions and some of the things that were going on with more people in, in urban areas impacted them more, you know, in, in a greater way. So as you had more restrictions and limitations down there, it could have sent more labor, more of a labor force up here into the Sherman area that maybe didn't have uh, the challenges that they were dealing with in the urban areas. And so that was a positive as well. Watching our supply chain has been something that they've been doing all along the way. And, and I reported uh, last week to the Herald Democrat when we talked about supply chain issues. We've really only seen one supply chain issues and it related to our glass. Uh, we had a situation where a, a warehouse offsite that was providing the glass for uh, for Sherman, the new Sherman High School. They had a shutdown for a couple of weeks, which delayed a couple of weeks, but it, right. it really didn't impact us in a major sort of way. So it delayed us a couple of weeks on that. But so really, we've not seen that labor impact, the labor force impact in a great way, nor the supply chain impact. So we're still on track with what we said back in January of 2020, that we're going to be starting school at the new Sherman High School in January of 2021. Awesome. That's awesome. So, Tyson, uh, just to kind of wrap things up here, if there was one message you wanted to share with the uh, with the Sherman community, just a positive message about what's going on with the school district and, um, you know, what how things are looking moving forward, what would you say to people who are watching this? Sure. So first and foremost, for our families and for our kids in our community, we are working hard every single day to provide that safe environment for our kids to make sure that we have kids uh, that are in school, that are remaining in school, that are remaining well. Uh, we're paying attention to every individual student, whether it's students that may uh, come up with some symptoms that we need to watch out for, talking to our families, apprising our families when situations where we may have a situation where a COVID case comes up and what we're doing, we immediately communicate. We want to always communicate. And so I'll tell you, tell, your, tell our community that we will be communicating as we've already done uh, every step of the way. And our facility, the standpoint of our facilities and our cleaning and what we're paying attention to, we really step that up. We continually step that up and, and we're doing all that we can in terms of training and supervising hygiene with our kids on site. Uh, always working hard to continually improve our remote, our remote learning experiences because we want to make sure that whether you're in our schoolhouse or whether you're remote learning, you had those opportunities and they are rich learning opportunities for our kids uh, for our families. And so we, we want to make sure that we're doing that. Last thing I want to say is we really couldn't do this without our community, without the support we see from the meals team, from every other uh, community partner that we have. It's just been amazing. It's times like these when you realize what a great community that you live in. And, and it's a great day to be in Sherman. And we are so appreciative of what we're seeing. So let's keep rolling together. Let's keep building Bearcats. And it's an exciting time. 
Awesome. Well, I really appreciate your time. One last question. If mm -hmm. people want more information or they just want to kind of follow along with how things are going, where's the best place for somebody in the community to follow along with Sherman ISD just to get updates and information on what's going on? Sure. So definitely on our website, you'll see the links there for COVID-19 on our website. We'll put out information there. Uh, but also our Facebook side, if you haven't liked Sherman ISD Facebook site, do that because we put information out there. Families uh, who are already have students here in Sherman ISD, they're already connected with us through our phone number and through our Blackboard Connect, through our our, our texting system that we have up. Uh, Kimberly Simpson here with Sherman ISD does a great job with communicating within our community. So uh, those are the main areas that you want to connect with us. And, and, and I'll also say, put a plug in here for uh, the Battle of the Axe. Coming up soon, Corey, the Battle of the Axe, <laughs> September 24th. Uh, we changed that date, September 24th. That's a Thursday over in Denison, we're going to go over there and take the axe back. And it's an exciting time because Channel 12 has already put out there that they're going to be airing the game on my network. They're going to take delay it on Fox. And we have a new streaming app that we just uh, uh, got approval for and through the UIL as well. We're going to be streaming because we're going to be experiencing, just like all schools in Texas, capping the attendance at these events, at these athletic events. Since we're going to be capping those, we have now an app uh, that's going to be able to stream all of our live events. And so that Battle of the Axe is going to be through our streamed app as well. So keep an eye on our website, keep an eye on our Facebook. We'll be talking about our streamed app. We want to bring all those experiences. As I said, Corey, we want to make sure that, that our community, that our kids don't lose out on those experiences, those memorable events. And so we're doing all we can to bring that to our community. So look out for that. But September 24th, we're going to bring the Axe back. Awesome. Well, Tyson, uh, I, I just want to say once again, thank you so much for your time. And I also want to uh, say thank you to all the, the faculty and staff there at Sherman ISD, um, what they've gone through. And, you know, I saw it at the end of last year in the spring, whenever we had to close down what they did, you know, helping students. And now what they continue to do has just been awesome. And like you said, uh, community members, there's, there's tons of local businesses that, uh, you know, we're all, we all compete for business, but I saw everybody come together and that was just awesome. Um, uh, and so I really appreciate what you guys are doing. And um, I, I, once again, thank you for your time and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Keep, uh, keep up the good work. Great. Anytime. Thanks, Corey. Talk to you later. Have a great day.